Have you watched, because I'm, I'm sort of obsessed with it. Have you watched the Teal Swan documentary? Yes. The what? I told her, the Teal, in the, the deep end over on Hulu. Have oh, you watched it yet? no. No, I've added it to my watch list, but I haven't watched it yet. Are you, you telling me to. I need to? Okay. Yes, because like this, like, it's crazy, Naomi. The things that this woman says on camera knowingly, she says these knowingly on camera, and what is she saying when she's not? What is she saying when she's not on her guard? Like, I don't know. And I just, right. cause I just saw, I just saw um, a TikTok from her because she's all pissed off now that it's out. I guess they followed her for like three years. And um, now that it's out, she's like all annoyed and she's had like but many she, responses. They were working to, on it though, right? Yeah, but that's, I guess what they told her, the narrative of the docuseries was going to be is not the narrative that has come out allegedly uh, um and i guess it was supposed to be something like showing what she's really doing and like exonerating her was her impression um and not uh what has actually come out as the docu docuseries and so she's been had her panties all in a twist and she wants like all of the she, she's saying everything's out of context and um of, of course she's saying that so somebody one of her many followers has made a petition to have all of the raw footage over three years released <laughs> to imagine so that some what? people can watch that and get the full content three years of footage i mean i'll try to watch it this month you know i've been watching a lot of things you know i love my tv yeah but you know i know you do the Okay, I don't. All, so the fact that I have something to tell you to watch should I know it's, it's like weight. amazing. It's because I had COVID and I couldn't do a lot of things. <laughs> I will. I will definitely watch. There are so many things to watch. So many. TV is really, really fun right now. I'm having a good time. Did you watch Julia I mean, yet? I don't. I don't have COVID anymore. So no. <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying. You had a, a window. Show. You had I told a you window. During the window. I told you what to watch. I said watch Julia on HBO Max. I almost watched watch it. Watch the flight attendant. I've I watched did not that already. Watch that. Like four times, seasons one and two. Uh, I looked at Julia, and then I didn't. I think I finished Bridgerton, and then I, and then I got into the deep end, and then I think I took a bunch of naps, and then like, and then I told you watch the staircase, not the documentary on Netflix, but the show on HBO Max, and there was something else I told you to watch. I gave you like four things. Yeah, I, didn't I always to you. have oh, a TV sorry. show recommendation. Always. I know. Of it. Look, I love my books and I love my TV. Yeah. You know this. You know this. I give both, you know, a good amount of my time. I still haven't watched Heartstopper. Like, I, I'm behind. Now, that I'm, I'm surprised about because you love Heartstopper. Yeah. You know we'll what see. we ended up doing? We ended up watching a lot of Buffy. That's what ended up happening. We Did got deeper into our yet? Buffy. No, because we watched it together, so... What we did have I rewatch Buffy? Was it earlier? We this both year? have to be home. We both have to be like in the mood. I think we're still on season two, and if we are, we're like almost done with it. Like we have an episode or two to go, and then we'll hop into season three. I had a really good time rewatching Buffy, which I either did earlier this. It must have been earlier this year, or maybe the end of last year. But anyway, it was the first rewatch like in a long time, and it was just so fun. I've never so rewatched it, and I think it's really funny how many of these episodes I remember, like, to a T. And, I mean, I've watched them once. Oh, that's crazy. I years so ago. Stuff. Or maybe or maybe, maybe twice if there was a rewind, 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 rerun. Rerun. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no. I just loved Buffy. So, it like, was I was so like fun. that. I was wrapped in that. Yeah. It was a good time. There's just some good stuff on TV. I love it. I caught up on Queen Sugar. I think they're coming into their final season. That's going to make me sad. <clears throat> that show was just so good. Anyway, for all you TV buffs out there, what are you? What are you? What are you watching right now? What are you watching? Are okay, you give me recommendations? Awaiting? 
I won't. The, I won't watch. <laughs> you anxiously awaited the new season of Succession, like I am. Bring it on, baby. Bring it on. What are you watching, folks? Tell me all. I the can't things. see. Like I can't do all the things because watch all the things because I do all the other things. Like I only have so many hours in the day. Well, the, here's the difference between you and I is the type of jobs we have. I have a desk job. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I can have my, because you know my Kindle's my TV, because I don't mm-hmm. use it to read. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyone else out there use a Kindle as a TV and not as a reading device? Anyone? Anyone? When oh. I had a Kindle Fire, I did that. <laughs> yeah. So I can like have a show going on while I'm working. You know what I mean? Yeah, I and then, you know, at night, like I'm not really a nighttime reader. I don't enjoy reading at night. My cutoff is like eight o'clock. And then from like eight to 11, it's TV time, baby. It's TV time. No, so I'll I read. A I lot like of reading at in. night. I like reading at night. And then when I watch TV at night, I'm really just watching like the same freaking YouTube shit over mm. and over again so that I fall asleep because like I just have it on to lull me to sleep. So if I start watching something like I'm interested in that I've never seen before, suddenly I'm staying up instead of going to bed and then. Then it's like 4 a.m. and I've just finished the, what was that show I was watching when we went away for the weekend? Oh. The Extraordinaries or something like that on. The Never. The Never. The Never. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. It's, that's a good show. I like that show. <laughs> was I not I messaging you? I don't know if I got picked up or not. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Was I not messaging what like you messaging were, you, you at all yeah. hours of the night going like this is why I don't watch TV? But I, but I was loving it. I was like, yeah, she's watching that good show. I was loving it. Um. Oh, you know what I did watch during? <laughs> Such a fucking loser. I did watch during <laughs> what did during you watch? my COVID TV stint. Um, there was. Do you know what the show Father Brown is? So no. Father Brown is a collection of. It's it's originally a collection of stories about this priest that solves murders, uh-huh. and then the BBC made it into a show. Where and he's kind of kooky, and he's in the fifties in like a small village in the UK, yeah. um, solving murders. So they just made like a spin-off version of it because it's really? done really well, and it's a like a crime-solving nun. So the first episode oh, was out, that. and I was I was I binge watched that. It's like Sister Something. I'll send it to you. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, that sounds so fun. And it's I just enjoyed it. And she's this like. You would actually really like her because she's kind of like, she like has a little chem lab and like oh. she's really kooky <laughs> and like weird and yeah, it's a, <laughs> and they deal that with fantastic. like homosexuality in 1950s UK oh. a lot, which is was like, I was shocked to see how many episodes actually touched on, on that because it was very much illegal and the amount of crimes that they solved that are like wow somehow touch up against somebody that they're they're suspicious not because they're the criminal but because they're homosexuals and they have to like the cops have to be like our little detectives like well i don't really care about that don't worry because right. if they cared about them you'd be like imprisoned so you know times were fun send me that um, i would love to watch that yeah Okay, before I'll we get started, it. before we get started, just one more show recommendation. I just finished last night. Oh, I, it I is, started her off. I'm sorry. It was I my know. Fault, I'm so, it, it, deal with it. Here we go. It's Shining Veil. Vale. Shining Veil vale is fantastic. Starring Courtney Cox. It's hilarious. And also, like, full of horror. It's wonderful. I'm it's, sure it is. It's wonderful. <laughs> Shining Veil. Vale. It's on Stars. Check it out. I hope there's a season two. I hope there's a season two because I really enjoyed it. Also, I just want to say that I hate these super short seasons. These eight episode seasons, you all can stuff it up your butts. I want, I want more shows. I want more shows. I'm an old lady. I'm coming from the era of you know twenty to twenty two episode seasons. Y'all are giving me eight and ten. Huh. It's terrible. <laughs> She's so mad. Were you wearing a pink shirt before? You look nice and pink. Oh no, I had on the black shirt with the blue plaid yeah. over it. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you very much. You look very nice in pink. Go Thank over you. to the video if you're listening to this to see how lovely she looks in the pink. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <clears throat> All right. TV <laughs> time over. Cause I TV time I, over. Maybe I need another podcast just about TV shows. 
<laughs> you're not going to do it with me. It's just going to be you telling me TV shows and me going, yeah, I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> I think you might like Shining Bell, though. Maybe. And maybe in like you 30 know. years I'll watch. <laughs> probably. Probably. Next time I'm sick, maybe. Well done, Shining Bell crew. Well done. And okay. Hopefully I'm not sick for a while because I've already I'm- had enough. You've had enough. Yeah. I've had enough of 2022, to be honest with you. We're not even halfway done. 2022. I, it's has not your friend. Damaged my wallet. 2022 is not your friend. Remember how, I, like, remember in January when I was like, damn me, we're going to get my finances in order. I was going to start saving money. I'm going to start doing all this stuff. We're going to get my shit together. And then, like, one thing after another, after another has broken in my house. 2022 and not like laughed in your face and said, oh, you think even, you're going to do that? <laughs> even my toaster oven broke, so I had to go buy a new toaster oven. Good grief. Yeah. Not toaster oven, like toaster, actually. It was, this year has it was not a, been kind to you. So anyway. Not at all. Okay. Anyway. All right. Thank Let's God read. for publishers that send us books. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's expensive, y'all. I mean, good grief. You the know, whole world's expensive right now. I'm always appreciative of the books that publishers send me. Mm-hmm. But when I go into like a Barnes and Noble, I become extra appreciative when I see mm. all those new releases and I look at those price tags and I'm like, the publisher sent me that, that, and I'm like extra grateful. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, I wouldn't buy half those books. I can't you justify, can't. I can't justify the cost. You, you know can't. what I mean? It's too so, expensive. Yeah. I'm, I'm also thank grateful. God for the libraries because not everybody gets books sent to them from the publisher. Um, mm-hmm. That is a privilege. But the library is is a benefit for all. Go check out your no, library. The actually does library actually does so so much. Like it's it's not just a place to go get books. No, they the library so is a community things. Yeah, they you can get your get help with your taxes. You can learn how to start a small business. You can learn to do so language many learning. It is a community resource. Remember that. There's Remember after school that. programs. There's summer camps. There's there's so many things. The well, library speaking of library, a wonderful place. Let me shout out mine. Um, one of mine. Uh, my local library, the Prince William County Library System. So my library in particular, the Montclair Library. They have this romance book club called Shelf Indulgence. Mm. So when I, I went yesterday to drop some books off that I needed to turn in and they always have like little flyers in the elevator. And I was like, oh, what is, oh, that's new. And so guess what their June pick is? Is it seven days in June? It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm starting that this week, right? Okay. I'll start this week too. Cause we're going to talk okay. about that. So I'm starting yeah. that this week. I'm starting the book of form of emptiness this week and I'm starting stranger in a strange land. Okay. What am I reading this week? I have a busy week this week. Yeah. Including two books that I'm trying to finish, one of which we'll talk about when we talk about what we're currently reading. Okay. Yeah. But, so they're going to have a discussion about it on June 22nd. And I'm like, oh, I should go just to kind of meet You should folks. go. Yeah. Especially because so. it's your summer of romance. Naomi <laughs> is going to figure out what romance she, if any, she enjoys. Yes. I want. I want to find out. So... I learned to help me out. I posted something the other day in my stories, if you happen to see it, where it was somebody's TikTok where she's breaking down spicy smut and and erotica. She did a good job. I've decided that, like, I think I can do two of that three circle Venn diagram. Okay. (laughs) Uh, I think just straight erotica, where it's just more sex than plot. Mm-hmm. I can't. I need a plot. I'm sorry. I need a plot. I think I need a plot. And I need it to actually be a plot, not like a very like after seventeen rounds of heavy banging, you throw in something to try to make it a plot, and yeah, then you just forget it immediately me. and go back to the bang. <laughs> yeah, don't don't dinner vipers me. Dinner vipers was just too long. It was entirely too long. And there was a plot, but I mean, there was a moment where I thought it was over and I forgot that one of them was still like captured. And I was like, well, oh, fuck, you got to go get them. And there's still a hundred and something pages left. I was like, no, you could have logically, if you hadn't had this kidnapping happen, you could have logically concluded this book here. Happy scrappy. Fine. 
there were actually a couple of places in that book where I thought they could have just just shut it down. Or um, it should have been but it was a fun buddy read, though. It was a it fun was a really read. fun buddy read, and it's still time. the to date the best video that I've ever put out on my YouTube channel. This is unreal, folks. Unreal, but yeah, that was one of our really fun buddy reads. I think from all of our buddy reads, I think our tops were Imaginary Friend, The mm-hmm. Ark of the Scythe series, and mm-hmm. Den of Vipers. I think those are our most like most engaging buddy reads where everyone was just like totally into it and just had such a good time. Yeah. I mean, Den of Vipers, I, it consistently has, it's consistently my top viewed video. Not that I have a lot of views, but like it's consistently being watched in the last 48 hours, 16 people have watched it. Like, Are you it, serious? And it is constantly at the top. It has like over 5,000 views. <laughs> it just keeps getting watched. Are you serious? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I think that's crazy. I, I'm i dumbfounded right now, just so you know. That's really it, funny. It is consistently the number one video on all of my analytics. It is always the number one video. What are you trying to tell her, folks, that you want her to do more smut book videos? Is that what it is? Is this what you all desire? I don't know. <laughs> So wow, yeah, I got a kick out of that one. So. Interesting. Okay. Well, what are you reading, or what have you just finished? Oh, what am I reading? Uh, I'm reading Half Blown Rose by Lisa Cross oh, Smith. So everywhere. Give me talking the about talking about things the publishers send you. Thank you for sending me this. Grand Central. Grand Central sends me many lovely books, um, and I'm a little behind reading this, but I finally. I'm finally reading it. So this came out. Is this come out yet? I can't tell. I feel like I have different um, release dates. This has had a couple of different release dates, and I think it's already out. Um, but this is about this woman who is living in Paris, and she's estranged from her husband mm-hmm. because that she's been with four years. They have two kids. Um, lucky for her, her parents are famous artists that travel around a lot and happen to have a wonderful apartment in Paris, Mm -hmm. Um, which let me tell you, when I was estranged from my husband, I would have loved to have spent my time in Paris, but that was not the option. I was in nursing school. So it was a very different experience, but she is trying to figure out like what she does with her marriage after um, her husband, who is an author, uh, writes this auto fiction uh, story, which brings to light the fact that when he was a teenager he got this woman pregnant and they have a kid and she had no idea that he had this kid for the decade more that they've been together um and this just happens to come out she feels very betrayed she has no she does she has a lot of feelings she has no idea what to do with all of her feelings she doesn't know if she even knows him anymore like how many more secrets does she have why is she finding this out reading this auto fiction and all this stuff so she goes to paris She's teaching these classes in Paris at a museum. Um, She's like basically just living her life in Paris. She's having Mm -hmm. an American in Paris moment. And it's just lovely. It's beautifully written. Um, She's just starting where I am now. She's reached out to the the son um, of her husband. And actually, she's even gotten into contact with his mother as well. And so, like, she's building some relationship with them, and she, you're just watching her have self discovery um, in Paris. Okay. With, yeah. And so she may or may not have a little affair with a young Parisian man. And uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. That's what every woman needs. Um, yes, yes. And so, yeah, it's good. Uh, what I like about it is that there's. One of the things I like about it so far is that, um, so the classes she's teaching, there's a lot of like writing exercises involved and they're centered on art as well. And I like the little, it's almost like there's a story, like a plot of a story that is t- also taking you through like a writer's workshop because you're getting all these oh. different, uh, like little creative writing prompts and things as, cause she, that's what she's doing. So it's, it's kind of, like you could almost like read this and be like, I could see this being like taught in a literary class or a creative writing class and you're reading it and you're talking about like the novel and how it's written and all this other stuff, but you're also doing some of the exercises that she is talking about in this book, like read up yeah. to ch- chapter eight and do, you know, the exercise 
writing about everything you see that's green or whatever it is. <laughs> and so it's kind of fun. Um, yeah. So I'm, just, I'm just enjoying it. I really like her writing. I find it just, she's just like a really nice contemporary writer for me. So I enjoy her. So I had no idea what that book is about. I just was seeing it everywhere. And I was like, what is this book? What is going on with this book? What is it about? Yeah, she just, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I am enjoying it. Um, I, I can think of one book bear who probably wouldn't because there's the potential for cheated. But Jesus <laughs> look, I don't want to like, I don't want to yuck anybody's yums or like, you know, make light of the things you don't like in a book. But I, I don't know. I've, I don't know if it, it's strange that people are so, that some people are so bothered by cheating. Some things, books. or even there's other things people get bothered by, but yeah. Um, I guess maybe it's just harder for us because there aren't things that make us mad to that strong of an extent. Like, where we're not like, in a, we, not can, in a book. we can never read. What did, what did she say in the most recent video? Someone's going to figure this out, but I was laughing because <laughs> she just has such strong opinions. Um, Oh, she doesn't like certain kinds of banter in like romance oh, books. Right, and that's what she says. Right. And I was like, but like that's the fun that's, part. That's Sarcastic fun part. banter is the fun right. part. Right. And that's fine. We don't have to like the same things. I'm not like Of course not. Of if, course. If you've Absolutely. already figured out who we're talking about, um, we both still very much like her and follow her. There's yes. nothing with that. But um it's just it's just funny that like it's such the opposite of how we both are as readers right. that it's kind of funny sometimes when you're really, really going to get exactly. your panties that much of a twist over <laughs> witty, sarcastic bit. Yeah, she's like, she was like, immediately no. Immediately no. Immediately like, oh, no. Okay. But all you right. know what? And, you know, we are all different. We all like different hey, things. Hey, we all like different things. There's no right or wrong way to enjoy a book or like a book. We like what we like. No, but I just think just what it is. Sometimes. I feel like when people have really strong opinions like that, like I don't like books about, we'll just stick with the cheating. I don't like books that touch on cheating. There's a lot of books that might have cheating in there that that's not everything. Like it's not a book to tell you to cheat on your husband, you know, or your wife. You know or how your we boyfriend. talk about this. Sometimes we there's a lot of stuff this. in there. There's a lot of stuff in there to unpack. Yeah, we know. But we, had we a whole... addressed this a few weeks ago, and you know we how have this I feel in another about episode. it. I really do feel like, and if hey reader, if you're a person who doesn't like cheating in your books, let me know what you think. But I always feel like women in particular don't like some women in particular don't like reading about cheating or affairs in their books because it hits too close to home for them. Either something they have already experienced or are currently experiencing or are terrified of experiencing in their own marriage. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. So, um, you know, but you also know that my, my theory is that when someone cheats on you, it has nothing to do with you. It doesn't. And like it's all cheating about another is such person. a common thing in, it's so common. It's, it's so, so common. freaking common and it doesn't excuse it or make it like, Oh no, we're not thing. saying it's right. But, but it's I mean, so it's common. Common, and mm -hmm. so if you're gonna have a story that is about people, and if you're gonna talk about like human experiences in your, what if it's about relationships? And it's about a relationship. Then yeah. ignoring that piece of relationship to me it seems like it's um, unrealistic. It's unrealistic. Yeah, you but know? I mean, reading is your pastime. Reading is whatever. Like, yeah. you do what makes you happy. But for hey. me personally, I I want. Honestly, I am most happy when I'm reading something that's, if it's about people, like people, people, about relationships and pe personal experiences and being human and living, I would, uh, the more raw and truthful it is, the more I connect with it. When I read about- Whether I agree or like what's happening or not. Absolutely. When I read about relationships and families, I do not want this very cookie cutter- um, always happy on the outside story. I no. want all of the grit, all of the heartache and pain and the joy. I want it yeah. all. I want all the complexities of those relationships and those family dynamics. I want every piece of that. I want the realness of the relationship and those families. Well, because that's life. Exactly. In my humble opinion. In my humble opinion. <laughs> Again, it's no right or wrong. You know, we're just talking. <laughs> we're just talking. 
<laughs> We're just talking shit. <laughs> All right. So I am still reading Night Crawling by Layla Motley. Thank I you, Kanaf, so for badly. this. Oh, thank you, Kanaf, for this advanced copy. And they just sent me a finished copy. So thank you for both of those. So this story, what is her name, Kiara? So Kiara and her brother, ooh, boy, are they in a predicament. They live together in this apartment, this not so great apartment. And they have a lot of back rent. And the landlord is like, basically, you know, get this money to me or you will be evicted. Uh, mm-hmm. The brother Marcus does not have a job. He has some aspirations of being a rapper. So <laughs> that's going great. And um, Kara's trying to figure out how am I going to save us all? They also live with this friend or whatever. And she has a son who is, I think, nine. His name is Trevor. And the mom is sometimes on drugs, sometimes not on drugs. She's just not a great caregiver to her son. So Kara has kind of taken on the role of like the auntie to ensure that no one lets this little boy down. She's like getting him up and getting him dressed and prepared and taking him to school and just being there for him. So she's not just looking out for herself and her brother, but also for this little boy because, Mm -hmm. you know, who else is going, you know, to do it. And so something happens. She goes somewhere and and she, this is going to sound weird, but like she didn't plan on getting into sex work. It just kind of a sex work incident happened. And when it happened, it made her think, well, maybe this is a way that I can kind of get by and get us out of this jam until I can it's find the something better. trade in the books for a reason. <laughs> right. Now, I'm only 105 pages in, and this book is 269 pages. But it's so engrossing. It's so captivating. And... I think Layla does a really good job at like you could you could feel the heat that Kiara is like under like you can you can feel it like the, the wolf's at the door, mm-hmm. the wolf's at the door. There's no way around it. She's got to get this money, and she doesn't have a lot of options, and she doesn't have a lot of time. Her father's mm-hmm. deceased. Her mother's mm-hmm. in jail for something. I just got to meet the mother. Mm. Um, you know, I, <sighs> not everybody has a wonderful mother. I know, but like this mama's effing with my head. I'm telling you, she <laughs> she's effing with my head because she's like sort of a nice mom, sort of a street mom. I I, I I'm really I'm trying to figure her out. And she's it's like she's blackmailing her daughter and also like kind of like reveling in the fact that <laughs> Her daughter and her son can't quite make it without her. It's a very strange dynamic. I'm trying to figure it out. But mom's giving me some ill vibes. Like, seriously. (laughs) She's giving me ill vibes and she's really messing with my head. So, needless to say, I'm totally invested in this book. And I can't wait to finish it. And I can't believe this young woman is like, when did she write this or started? When she was 17 or something? I keep hearing that. It's incredible so far. It's incredible. So this is Night Crawling by Layla Motley out now from Kanoff. Thank you, Kanoff, for this arc and finished copy. Yay. Woo. Yeah. So um, I want to stick this out there in case somebody who's tech savvy is listening and we can make this. You know how, like, when you search on your Roku TV, you can search just Roku TV and it'll search all of your app, everything that's out there for you to find a show to go back and like who's playing it. You can search it on Google. It tells you that you can watch this show on all these platforms. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have an app that can connect to all the things on your phone that can give you access to digital books and audiobooks and tell you where it's available. Ooh. So I can search one app and be like fresh water for flowers. And it'll tell me it is here. And there. And it's like when that. you go to IMDb and you click on a show and it tells you where you can watch that show. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it's actually kind of complicated to, to build because, you know, you'd have to not just go through Libby, but go through Libby and your access to your 
library systems and you'd have to right. go through hoopla. I mean, it sounds have complicated. To build, but wouldn't it be nice? It would be very nice. It would be very nice because what I get sick of is going through all of my audiobook apps hunting for the book. But what, here's mm-hmm. one thing I do first is the first place I check is Audible. Because if it says Audible only, you're like, Boom. well, God, I have to get it from Audible. Boom. Exactly. So I check Audible first. And um, if I don't see it there, then I, I check everywhere else. But it's still well, like Also, if it's time. not on Audible, it's probably not an audiobook. Right. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Somebody make that. Somebody make that happen. So, yeah. When you make it happen, happen, come on the show so we can interview you. <laughs> yeah. Put a dedication somewhere to us. Thank you, yeah. TBR Lowdown, for inspiring this app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what are we talking about? What is today? I'm trying to figure out if I want those laid on or not. I No. Okay. Didn't do anything. Anyway. So cool. we are... We're talking about a book. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. This is a day where we're talking about books that we read really during the same weekend, last weekend. This Today yeah. is June 12th. So last weekend, we read two of the same books. And we were like, we have to talk about these. Yeah. And um, today we're going to talk about Just By Looking At Him by Ryan O'Connell. Just fantastic. I love the cover. I the cover is so I'm good. Just gonna say it. The artwork that they chose for the cover is stunning. Love it. Absolutely love I'm it. I'm gonna frame this. Oh, they give you a print of it. That's so mm-hmm. lovely. And then they have a Spotify playlist on the back. Really? Mm-hmm. Want me to Perhaps screenshot it's... it for you? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but this was probably one of my most fun reads of COVID. For sure. Honestly, so much fun and so funny and (laughs) raunchy. Oh my God. Like it's, if you, if you want to understand Alyssa's humor, (laughs) like things that are going to make me just cackle. She's not lying. Like My level book. of like raunch that I like all I have the brain of like a 12 year old boy when it comes to like sexual jokes and thoughts. Like if you say anything, my brain is probably making it an innuendo. Mm-hmm. And like, <laughs> uh-huh. I don't know, it just, just felt so I, I just I loved it so much. I loved it. She's not kidding. There were so many moments. So I was outside on the deck reading this book. And I'm telling you, I cannot even count the amount of times I laughed out loud. Mm -hmm. I mean, this book just had me cackling. It it was, Mm -hmm. it was really so fun. So much fun. And just so good. So breakdown. But what is this, what is this book about? Give us the, Oh gosh, I have to do it. So this is about Elliot who is a TV writer and I'm assuming this is some form of auto fiction because our writer is also a TV writer. Um, he has, um, is he cerebral palsy? Mm-hmm. Yes. He's cerebral palsy, but, um, not too bad, which comes up a lot of times. It's like, how bad is your cerebral palsy? And he is a young gay man. He is in a seemingly great job. He is the perfect boyfriend with the perfect penis. And he mm-hmm. isn't happy. <laughs> um, he and his boyfriend are drinking to excess and oh, yes. to avoid a lot of things. Um, he is constantly dealing with being uh somebody with a disability and working with the disability um and all of the things that come from living in society with a disability and working yeah. and then also being queer and navigating being queer and queer with a disability and figuring out what he actually wants and what's going to make him happy in a relationship because he thought he would be happy with a seemingly perfect man, but he really isn't. Uh, he This leads to uh, a very interesting series of events, starting with a sex worker. Mm-hmm. Um, 
who he kind of falls for. I just, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted because on the pond, which I can see from here, the geese are here and they've just had their little goslings and there is just like, just a line of tiny baby <laughs> geese swimming <laughs> behind their mama and I'm distracted. <laughs> Because it was adorable. Well, <laughs> anyway, let me say this before we get started. They've gone behind a tree, so keep going. <laughs> let me say this before we get started. Um, if you're listening with kids, put on your earbuds because, again, mm. this book is raunchy. There are raunchy scenes. There's raunchy language. We're going to be talking about it all. We're going to be reading some passages. So if you're, you know, if you're listening with little it's, kids, put in your earbuds, put on your headphones. This is adult conversation here. This isn't just f bombs. This is yeah. this is this is all the things. This is all the things. So you know, countdown: five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Let the raunch begin. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's not just our usual f bombs. There's more to right. it this time. We're oh, getting yes. sassy. Yeah. But even he he. he he has this really terrible boss who is like an elder queer and has navigated life in Hollywood as, mm -hmm. you know, they, they talk a bit about how, you know, like even when you knew everybody or a lot of people were gay in Hollywood before it was okay to be gay, you still didn't, you know, you didn't talk about it. And like, this is the kind of guy that grew up through it. So he's this very brash and mean boss. And he's like really abusive to a lot of his yes, employees. He is. And all this, but somehow he thinks it's appropriate to just announce that he's going, he and his partner are seeing a sex worker. And like, this is the guy and giving all right. the deets and all this other stuff. Like, Hey, if you want them, you can use them. Exactly. It's just such a bizarre event <laughs> like i couldn't imagine my manager walking in and being like so my husband and i we did this right. to spice up our lives and like here's the <laughs> right like inappropriate much so if you're but looking for it let's go to the beginning because it, the first thing that stood out to me was this relationship yes uh between um what is his name elliot and and gus because Okay, it says, like, at 34, I did not know how to do a remarkable number of things. Uh, what is a duvet cover, and why do I see it as a threat to my life? <laughs> 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 because what, it's, what, what he says, he says, Gus was, in a lot of ways, my caretaker. And I was like, okay. So yeah. he's letting us know, like, he's in this solid relationship. But it is a relationship where, like, this guy has taken the role as a caretaker, and that's a different dynamic than like a wholly 100% romantic relationship. Because yeah. being a caretaker takes things down a different path. And I think what's interesting is, so, so like from my perspective as, as a nurse, I see a lot of relationships where one member of the relationship ends up having to be the caregiver for their spouse. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times where you're like, isn't that really lovely? And isn't that like wonderful? And it's probably different when you're talking about something that is a disability versus, versus like a terminal illness or like mm -hmm. a short term illness or any of that. But I feel like there's this natural thought where you're like, isn't that just so wonderful? And you want to only see the good and one member being the caretaker of another member and how like kind and all this other thing like and this book goes and shows how like yeah it, there's nothing inherently wrong with yeah. being the gardener what does he say like one's the gardener mm -hmm. one's the gardener um but sometimes that's not the real dynamic that right both partners need um and and I just love that discussion that they're having because mm -hmm. it's so easy for us all to go. And even Elliot kind of is like, isn't it great? Sort of. He's kind of like, you know, exactly. he takes care of me. But then at some point you're like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the garden anymore. I want to be a person. I want to be independent and looked at without having to be pitied you know there's the scene when he's trying to get out of the bathtub he's yeah like, no i can do i can do this mm -hmm. just just let me do it yeah because i there comes a point where i think that maybe when you have a disability you, and he mentions this like you you think that basically you have to take what you can get in terms of a partner because mm -hmm. who's going to want to deal with you and your disability so you get this person who is willing to quote unquote take care of you and to help you and to be there for you and mm -hmm. still love you Mm -hmm. And you kind of fall into being taken care of as well. But I think there comes a point where this person feels like 
but I can do things on my own. And I don't yeah. need you to be my caretaker 100% of the time. And I want to be a full realized person and do things on my own. And then that person has to understand that it's nothing against them and what they're doing or that they did anything wrong. It's just mm-hmm. that this other person with this disability wants to be more than just his or her disability. Yeah. Like you're not, what are you? You're Naomi. Like why right. can't Elliot be Elliot? Exactly. Not Elliot with cerebral palsy. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So there's, I love all that discussion because, you know, he, he can be seen as a bad guy because he, there's a lot of discussion how amongst their friends in particular and in, in subsets of gay um culture Mm -hmm. you know having a a long-term monogamous relationship where you never ever stray outside of it isn't always the norm and there is some level of tolerance of going to like a bathhouse and getting a handy Mm -hmm. and it's fine it's fine Um, it's normal but that's that's not what gus wanted gus wanted a relationship that was monogamous and just the two of them and in Elliot's discovery of what he actually really wants in a relationship, he ends up going out and seeking sex from other partners. Yeah. Excessively I guess should, almost. I guess we should back up and say that um, Gus had a lot more experience mm-hmm. with sexual partners before getting with mm-hmm. Elliot. Um, and Elliot had a very limited experience. So yeah. It's no different than when you're straight, right? Like, yeah, you know, no. getting married too young, maybe you had like one, you know, and you're curious. So that's all he's going through is that, that curiosity yeah. of being with other people. And so he seeks that out. He wants to have like a fully realized sexual, like, I don't know, awakening. Like, right. not just who am I and what, what do I want in a sexual partner? What kind of sexual partner do I want? And what kind of sexual mm-hmm. orientation? But like more than that, like a realized experience of of going out there and experiencing things. And he never really had that because of all kinds of other limitations um, from like just being an awkward person to having a disability to all these other things. And not having the confidence to get out there. Yeah. And so, you know, I think he does, he does fall for his, his escort, Mm -hmm. um, which I think is probably incredibly common. I wouldn't be surprised. The escort if you were was su- smooth, though, wasn't it? He was he very, was. very smooth and suave. I, I love when they too. go to. The, <laughs> I love when they go to the museum. Also, I just love the idea that he brings his dogs to his dog to the client, and he goes to see clients because he doesn't want to leave his dog behind. And right. I'm like, you know. If anybody would do that, it would be me. Like, right. I, like going to see a John, and I'd have mercy with it. exactly, exactly. It's like she's just going to bring Hemi in case anybody's mean to me. They just exactly, bite him. it was very sweet. But I related yeah, to that was, too hard. <laughs> he 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 was very very smooth, very smooth, and like I mean, you and, could tell he's perfected his craft. And he was very clear mm-hmm. about. Um, I mean, he was not fuzzy with his boundaries at all. He no. was like, no. no. Like, you are a client. Uh, we are doing a thing, and that is it. Like, even mm-hmm. when they went to the museum, and Elliot's, yeah. like, getting all goo-goo-eyed, like, on the way back, he stops at a Bank of America, and I was like, all right, buddy. Yep, you know, you didn't up. have any cash. Pay up time. Pay up. Like, you wanted a date. I gave you a date. Pay mm-hmm. me. Exactly. Let's not get it uh, twisted here. This yeah. is a job for me. Mm-hmm. This is a job for me, so. Yeah. Also, um, like, so you, you're you saying, like, you know, Gus wants this monogamous relationship, but like, sort of, but not really. Because again, like in Vladimir, like, I don't think Gus was being honest about what he wanted. Like, there were certain things that he wasn't satisfied sexually with Elliot, but he, yes. hadn't, he had not stated that to Elliot. That was something that he kind of repressed. But I think he repressed it because, so I think it's an, it, it, the, the big, it seemed like the big gate thing, gate, gating thing is, is, was topping. So like Elliot, because of his disability found topping incredibly difficult, right? incredibly painful, painful incredibly, mm-hmm. like logistically it, it is not the easiest thing for him. Right. Um, and he would, he would to make us happy attempt to do so but 
it does it just it wasn't the option and it feels like Gus sort of was like well it's I know I'm not gonna get this so I'm just gonna repress this right and not ask for it a lot right um but honestly that's not what he it doesn't it seems like he wanted more fluidity in the roles within his relationship sexually mm-hmm. and he didn't have it exactly so we got super excited when they did oh. bring in oh my are we going there already yeah I mean, we can go there. I mean, there's, it's raunchy, you guys. Isn't it? It's great. I love yeah. it. And when we say it's raunchy, it's not like, um, it, I th- it's literally the language. It's the, it's the yes. frankness with how they describe these, all the events that go on in the story. And like mm-hmm. from like just personal exchanges that have nothing to do with what Elliot is doing sexually to just like the way he talks to his friends to him describing the things that are happening exactly um, when he is the sexual experience. It is delightfully raunchy. I love it. It is. It, it truly is. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I, I want to make sure that we don't, I want to make sure I don't miss anything before. Some of these lines are so funny. I have so many, so many funny lines underlined. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> okay. I'm just making sure we don't miss anything uh, before we get into that part. Okay. Like I love, I have, I just opened the thing. It says, you know, at 22 or 23, when you graduate and other than making rent, you have no real commitments or obligations. The days belong to you. Only you, not your boyfriend, not your boss, not your mortgage. Just kidding. No one can afford a house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, okay. In the beginning, I like what he talks about how he and Gus engage in baby talk. He says a few years ago, Gus and I oh, developed yes, that the made nasty me cringe. Right, right. He says a few years ago, Gus and I developed the nasty habit of engaging in baby talk. And then further down, he says, "Once I was fucking Gus's mouth, and I couldn't come. He looked up at me, my uncooperative penis resting next to his cheek, and said in a full-on baby voice, "It's okay, my little Darwin." And he says, "Please, somebody help us." <laughs> What I liked about this is because like I liked the honesty of like the really cringy things you find yeah. yourself doing in relationships, but I also hated it because that just seemed like the if somehow I was in that role and somebody I would be out, I'd be like, absolutely right. not, no, right. goodbye, Sorry. immediately, no, immediately, no, not my thing, right, not gonna we're not, happen, we're not doing that, yeah, goodbye, <laughs> like, right. But then on the flip side, like you do do, like if you shared everything that you do in a relationship, there would be so many cringy things that you would be too embarrassed to I'm say. sure. Yes, there would be. There would be. We I know there are. Because I know things. we do cringy shit. We do cringy shit. We all do cringy, we do. cringy shit. We do. But I, baby I really, talk I while you're having sex really funny. is just... I think yeah. that is a level of cringe that, like, we we can't do that. We can't do that. I like that is like public service announcement. Can we not? <laughs> can we not? Right. Let's not ever make this a thing. Oh, that was the 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 uh, the the guy's name, River. Okay, that's what I was looking forward to. His oh name. yeah, River. River mm-hmm. and his little dog that would hide in the closet. So, so Elliot says at one point, it would have meant so much to be seen for so little. And maybe that's why I looked up river that day, the potential to be seen as just a body. Gus can't see me like that. He's too Mm -hmm. close. He thinks my body is crazy nice and that I look like Clark Kent, but he has long-term relationship Googles on goggles on he didn't even Googles. care <laughs> yeah he didn't even care when i gained 10 pounds one winter which i know i shouldn't have processed as wow my man is so sweet he loves me for me but instead i thought unconditional love disgusting your opinion is no longer reliable <laughs> i'm just gonna tell you that i felt that line so hard because yeah. he's just because i've gained so much weight and he's mm-hmm. just like I love you. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Same. Like, but you're still beautiful. What was the other day? He told me I was still beautiful. And I screamed at him because I was like, I never said I was ugly, bitch. I said I gained 30 pounds. <laughs> this is what I hate. So, you know, the man has this habit now of like just always playing with my stomach, which makes me feel even fatter. Like he he loves it. Right. And I'm like, um, you're making me feel fatter. He's like, oh, no. That's a grown woman right there. That's a grown woman. I'm like, oh no, I'm so tired of you. Shut the entire heck up. You've got, you've got, you've got a woman body. You've got curves. I don't want, I 
Ugh. Trust me, 30 pounds ago I had them too, but I didn't breathe heavy walking up the stairs and my arm spit in my shirts. And like that, I was you happy know? about. You know? So don't go so, yeah. and buy me a donut when I've just spent 20 hours crying about how I don't fit in my pants. I told him that. I was like, oh, you're looking at me with mother eyes. Like my mother will never see. My mother never sees when I look different. To her, to her I always look the same. Just beautiful. And I'm like, we you're looking at me with mother very eyes. very different mothers. <laughs> we have very different mothers. I said to my mom, I said, I said, oh, I've got to like lose this one. She's like, oh, oh, you look so pretty, sweetheart. You look so good, boo-boo. I'm like, okay, you got, I can't, I can't trust you. I can't trust you. I can't trust him. I can't trust your eyeballs. You all are liars. <laughs> Love is blind. Yada, Unreliable. Yada. So I get it what Ellie is saying. You, your opinion is no longer reliable. You're valid. No, it's not. We're like, thank on. you for loving me. I'm not mad at it for loving me. Anybody who wants to come at me and if we're saying nice things and I understand that I'm crazy, but I never said I was ugly. I just said I was bad. Right. Right. Also, moving on from our little weight talk here, I just want to point out that this is yet another book that mentions the area that I grew up in, Silver Lake, and I was very oh, happy yes. about it, okay? All right. This is happening more frequently now. I'm like, what's happening? <clears throat> the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, Naomi's going to be so I was happy. joyous. I really was. So joyous. All right. So we get to River, yeah? The sex worker. Yeah, so we get to River. So River, I, I like Weirdly enough, I like that he 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 actually did this step because it taught him one different ways to enjoy sex and to mm-hmm. give enjoyment during sex, which he wasn't really getting taught um just in his regular relationships because right because nobody was just treating him like a body like he says mm-hmm. so there were all these other things, and then it gave him the confidence to find what he wants or ask for what he wants and eventually i mean there's a lot of really messy stuff it's not like he went and fucked this guy and then suddenly he's like well i don't want to be in this relationship anymore it's like very messy and takes a while and it's a relationship and so it takes time but um i kind of like you have at some point you have to have that realization of like what you want or 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 you're never really going to truly be happy or have the potential to be truly happy Mm -hmm. you're kind of always doing what's either expected or what you're comfortable with. Right. I think that Gus and Elliot never had the exploration of sex in their relationship. Mm -mm. And it's like they had a barrier and then they stopped at the barrier and they never... It sounds like Gus took the lead. So Mm -hmm. Gus wasn't going to open that up then. Right. Elliot didn't have this experience to even know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There, it's like they were they were lacking an openness in regards mm-hmm. to sex in particular, and mm-hmm. because that lack of openness, they just kind of hit the wall, and that was it. Yeah. So, in in both regards for 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 the both of them, they weren't really being being pleased. Yeah. Because they just kind of shut the door. You know. Like, you know, it it's it, uh... I'm just glad he's not with Gus. Like, like they're real people. I'm glad he's not with Gus anymore. Um, but their drinking was like a big thing. And oh. I thought it was interesting that Gus wasn't really getting on board with the not drinking. So mm-hmm. even, even if you didn't have all those other things, just that alone would have destroyed or made it very difficult for that relationship to continue. Because yeah. once one person is like, I don't want to when you talk about things around sobriety and mm-hmm. the other one is not on board. It's very difficult. Yes, it is. And not like one of you is an alcoholic and one of you just drinks, um, but you don't have an issue. You know, you like, you like whatever, like you drink. If it, you were, if your partner was an alcoholic and you drink like twice a year, right? Like, those are different dynamics, mm-hmm. but like they were both abusing alcohol. Oh, they were yes. both, heavy heavy drinkers like they could not be in a relationship that was imbalanced that far Mm -hmm. nobody would have nobody would have found sobriety i mean when you make the drinking like a part of your day-to-day life routine and then someone says i want a different routine now you have a real issue and you're right it's not going to work it's not going to work and it did i mean and i think they mentioned that like it was um 
you know, using drinking to like avoid whatever was going on, Mm -hmm. you know, spoken or unspoken in their relationship, you know, and like that kind of avoidance takes forms in like many ways. I remember Mm -hmm. when I was married, we had a lot of events at the house because I don't think we like being like alone in a home together. So we had like lots of things happening at the house inviting people over all the time just to like avoid each other so like that avoidance comes in like a lot of different forms yeah there's lots of ways to do that Mm -hmm. and they did it with with alcohol exactly like how great is his dad because his dad's oh my goodness his dad was fantastic Mm -hmm. the dad was fantastic so wonderfully supportive and Mm -hmm. funny about it and care like what a great relationship and called him on his shit when he needed to. Oh, yeah. Which I appreciated, you know? She's like, oh, wait a minute, buddy. Slow down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they had a really nice relationship. I enjoy mm-hmm. that a lot. Yeah. Where is yeah. this the part? No, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Okay, is I thought I, I was looking for that, that dad part. I've got it marked somewhere. But he was just wonderful. Like, giving him the book about... You know, like trying to get him off of drinking and not making mm-hmm. it this very confrontational thing, right? I thought I thought the way that his dad that that whole thing was handled was was like a really nice way to deal with it. To be like, well, you know, you both buddy. Like it didn't blow up into some weird thing. He wasn't like attacking Elliot and being like, you need to get your shit together. You know, exactly. And it was a very open, honest. You can tell there was a lot of trust and respect in the relationship. Mm-hmm. And like, isn't that what we all want with our parents? Absolutely, absolutely. Sorry. Oh, I did find the dad part, but it's after we get into the threesome thing so i'll hold back until we talk about that i mean we can't talk about that you've already talked about you through 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 that boom so, all right so there's lots of ways that we all try to fix our relationships and uh gus tried to fix it by bringing river in as a threesome <laughs> right and what's the big problem with that the big problem is elliot has already had some sexy time with river and gus does not know about it nope nope so, <laughs> so that's a big secret that's a big old secret. How is this going to go down? And then also, I, I feel like it brought up a lot of extra insecurities for Elliot because Gus and River could do things together that oh yeah, Elliot could never physically do. And nobody wants to feel, nobody wants to see their inadequacy. Right. For lack of a better term. Um it's one thing to feel like I can't do something. It's another thing to have, you know, it proven to you that there's just some things you're never going to be. So up close and personal. Mm-hmm. And with your partner. Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking and about. And Gus was like, Gus got real into it, too. Listen, Gus was having the time of his life, and um, he did not hide that. No. He didn't he, hide it at all. He wanted to see River a lot. Yeah, so that... This river, look, man. You know what I thought about, right? <clears throat> I'm always, like, when people... When 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 Lifetime Partners and married people talk about having threesomes, I'm like, mm, be be careful. It may not go the way you want it to go or think it's going to go. Just just know you're you are letting someone else into the bedroom. And they can the leave with one of you. flip. <clears throat> Yeah. Just just saying, just know that's a possibility. So I always think it's playing with fire. <laughs> I think it's but also I don't share. <laughs> so I don't share either. I'm not I a don't share. And if you want I your also, body to be shared, then we're just gonna break up because I'm not about to do that. I also don't don't get me long. I don't think I've ever met a man that I have enough confidence in to believe that he could actually pleasure two women at the same time. Because that's most of the situations you get pitched when you're a cishet woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't have the confidence in that. I just yeah. don't. I'm like, yeah. you, you, you're working hard to get me going. I, I don't trust you to throw another one in there and actually do a good exactly. job. Exactly. Sorry. Exactly. So you know. So that that's 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 what happened. They they had their you know first experience you know with River together, and um, Gus liked it a little bit too much, and too he much. couldn't wait to call up River again. Just, nope. just couldn't wait. Keep calling River. <laughs> but I think they were both very scared to be on their own, too. I think when you've had a relationship yeah. for a while and you feel like on paper, in many ways, it's perfect. 
but in practice, it's really not, it's sometimes really hard to end it. Yeah. Like those relationships are sometimes the hardest to end because for whatever reason, you just feel like it should work. Yeah. Yeah. It's very routine. It's become very uh, normal part of your, your life. Mm -hmm. There isn't anything particularly dangerous or mean going on. Mm -hmm. And in all theory, it should work because it kind of is working in the very baseline sense of what works. And um, yeah, it's almost like you're stuck or you feel stuck. Mm -hmm. Because I guess maybe it's because you almost can't find a real reason to let it go. Yeah, like, what's, not what's, like, what's the oh, reason? he is X, Y, and Z, or right. I'm this, that, and the other thing. It's just, it's just not working. And those right. relationships are sometimes those hardest ones to get out of. Cause yeah, when you're just like you're living. You're comfortable. You, and, have right. this, you have a comfort level. You have a routine. You have mm-hmm. all of that. You're, living, your a, you're living a life together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you've made a life together. Exactly. And um, people identify you as a unit. I think mm-hmm. sometimes that becomes really difficult. Um, when the relationship's not working is when you aren't seen as you anymore and you're seen yeah. as the unit. Um, people don't almost don't want the unit to break up. Right. Right. So. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. this is, anyway, this is um, the dad. This is the after dad. they have their threesome and, you know, he go, Gus, uh, Elliot goes to his dad and he's talking about it. He says, um, um, uh, he tells the dad about the threesome and the dad says, wow. Um, and to think my biggest mistake as a parent was fooling you into thinking I was one of the cool dads. You could tell anything <laughs> too. And then Elliot says, oh, dad, you poor thing. I said, I never once thought you were cool. I just, <laughs> just these funny little lines. It's like, and, and, and that kind of also were... shows their really um, endearing, very close relationship. Like, to go to your parent about this dilemma you're having because you had a threesome with your partner. Like I couldn't, you even, know what I'm saying? I think there were conversations where I was like, I don't know if it's because everybody in this is a dude or what, but like I could never, cause I don't think I could say it to my mom and I sure as hell couldn't say it to my dad. Mm. There were so many conversations where I'd be like, nope, and maybe I'm a prude. I don't know when it comes to my parents, but like I could, I could not. I would be um, like, nope. You have I, a, I don't know. I feel like you could say things to your mom that I would never say. I though. do say things to my mom, and my daughter says things to me. But my mom is really open, so I was very <coughs> open with. I guess, I, like, I always felt like if I don't tell my daughters the real world, they're going to get this nonsense information off the streets or from school. And I'm, I just can't have it. So I'm going to be honest with them about shit. And I'm going to let it be known that you can ask me whatever you want to fucking ask me. And I'm going to answer it. I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. So, um, I mean, people think we're all too close. Like, how do you tell your mom that? But like, I'm, I'm just here to listen <laughs> and give advice if you want it. Same with my mom. I would so. hear, oh, Lissa. <laughs> <laughs> But her generation... Don't tell me those things. Well, because her generation wasn't like that. Mm-mm. You know? And so... And and my mother would never talk to my grandmother like that, but I think my mother wanted something different with me. She yeah. wanted us to have a more open line of communication than she had with my grandmother. So either you, you know, are, the, are like a carbon copy of your mother, or you see what you desire from your mother... And you want to do something different when you have children. And that's how my mother was. I definitely say things to my mom that like she would have never said to her mom and that are like outrageous, but not always that personal and not that sexual. Mm. (laughs) Like that would be so weird. Yeah. For me to do with my mom. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You're like, nope, not with us. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we're not get, we're not having brunch talk. We're just because you know what, we're just women. You're just having honest conversations. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Like we're just <clears> women <throat> having having conversations about life and about being a woman and being in relationships. You know, <laughs> you're like no, ma'am, no, ma'am, <laughs> no, ma'am. No, I have girlfriends for that. I will. Yep, I got girlfriends <laughs> for that. I got you. Like I mean. <laughs> 
there is definite like no, not with my mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, nope. But yeah. if she were more open from the beginning, it would be different. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But it's been established. I'm almost forty now. No, we there's yeah, no. Mm-mm. Yeah. I don't think I talk openly about it in my 20s, but like as I got, when I hit like mid 30s, because I think your relationship <laughs> continues to shift with your parents as you get older. And when I hit my mid 30s, my mom and I had another shift. Yeah. We got even more intimate and personal in our conversations. Um, but with my with my daughters, that was kind of always that way because I'm, I made it that way. Because you made the, it that way. Right, right. So, I mean, I, it's absolutely lovely that Elliot has a parent that he can be like, absolutely. Oh, totally himself with. Absolutely. And it's so wonderful to see. Yeah. It's so wonderful to see. So many other pockets of his life. You can see how he's hiding pieces of himself. Yeah. And like that's why. Funny. So you can see where Elliot got it from. I mean, that's yeah. kind of funny. He's funny. Because <laughs> when he first uh, goes to him and he says, um, uh, he says, your mistake. Oh, wait, okay, hang on. He starts saying, "Dad, help." Um, and he's massaging his dad's feet. And later on, he's like, "Uh, the dad says, oh, what? You got an STD or something?'" <laughs> <laughs> he said, "No, but I should get one. It could bring us closer." How are your gender <laughs> warts, by the way? Like this is the kind of funny banter that they have. Dad I says, "Keep forgetting the dad has gender warts." Right, and he says, "Dad says getting one frozen off next week." I mean, <laughs> I just <laughs> the back and forth with these two. <laughs> oh man this book it's so good it's but, so I mean, lovely what i think is so great is him meeting jonas so he finally meets somebody that isn't even like everybody else that he has in his social group like everybody yeah. in his hollywood life is like one kind of group of people everybody mm-hmm. in his regular group of friends is like another kind of people and then he's got like a like his his like hooker friend that's not helping him um even though river gives him some straight talk where he's like what do you like what do you mean like you're into me like you don't even know who i am like you've taken right. zero zero time to try to figure out who i am yep what i am you've never asked me a question you don't care so like right. why what are you expecting from me and like, then this Elliot's is like, he says, purely oh, tra- you're and he's doing stunned. something. He's like, no, I told you that. You didn't ask me. That's information I volunteered at the beginning. You did not ask me that question. Yeah. So yeah. he gets, even his escort gives him a little. Yeah. But um, I I really like that, that there's somebody that was outside of all of his normal groups, social spheres, everything that he can develop a relationship with and understand who he is within that relationship because it's not it's not really tainted with anything else it is right. just like it starts from where he is starting at that moment and can grow into a new version of him he doesn't have to or or maybe a more fully realized version of who Elliot is without yes. having to be influenced by all of the stuff because we all have the things in our past that influence mm-hmm. us and we're always going to kind of You know, when you go hang out with your friends from high school or college or whatever, 20 years on, you're just, there's always a piece of you that's going to be that version of you. Right. That even if you've grown away from it, there's pieces of that old version of you that are going to come out. Because that's how they know you. That's, I don't know, it's just the pattern of your relationship. But to have someone fresh and new and to be able to, when you've been going on a journey of figuring out who you are and what you want and da, 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 da. Absolutely. It's, it's wonderful. I like when Absolutely. we talk about books like they're real people. It's like, and I then know. my friend Elliot did that. I then. know. I love that part when um, Elliot's talking about when he's like, when he talks to his girlfriends about, you know, his gay life. And he says, I love trying to shock my straight female friends. Whenever I'd share an anecdote about a gay couple with an open relationship, their minds immediately went to their husbands. Do they want to fuck somebody else? Is this how yes. all men are? <laughs> yes. It's <was> like... <laughs> The answer is yes. Oh my God. I love it. (laughs) I mean, in the book talks about all the places that men have sex with each other. And Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, if men could just have sex, whatever they found attractive, like a large portion of them, gay, straight, whatever would do it. 
Yeah, I mean, look, it's really easy just to whip it out and put it in something. It ain't hard. I mean, well, it should be. It should be. <laughs> We said that. <laughs> I love this book but, so much. You know, it's it's not like they have to try hard to like figure it out. It's pretty freaking easy. Mm-hmm. Pretty freaking easy. So, um, oh, I do love. So he had this one commentary on <clears throat> what it's like to be a disabled person, and also waiting for the rest of the marginalized communities to get on board with the disabled community which mm-hmm. I thought was really good. So the first thing he says is uh, to be disabled is to understand at a base level that your existence, your experiences do not matter. Your life mm-hmm. isn't reflected in TV or movies. If it is, your options are an able-bodied savior. And he names the movie The Upside or in tragic mm-hmm. suicide. And there's a movie me before you or an actor donning crypt face so they can win an award. <laughs> Talking about what's eating Gilbert Grape. Uh, We're given these slots to exist, and then able-bodied people get to feel proud of themselves, even though they've given us no meaningful advancement. In fact, all Mm -hmm. they did was make money off our trauma. But sure, clap, 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 pat, pat, pat. And then he gets into, he says, the conversations around race and gender identity and sexism have developed over the years. We are nowhere near we need to be, but measurable progress has been made in certain areas. Donations pledged, petitions signed, protest signs made, jobs given, message received. We must continue to do better, but I'm sitting here waiting for that conversation to happen around disability. I'm waiting for able-bodied people to be like, oops, babe, we fucked this one up, didn't we? And Mm. feature us on magazine covers and give us ramps and meaningful employment and pass real legislation. It's Mm -hmm. wild to be ignored in a culture that currently has such a hard-on against injustice. When the fuck will it be our turn? Which Kardashian do I need to throw down the stairs and paralyze to get this able person on the cover of Vanity Fair? And now that is like, one of oh my, my favorite God. lines in this entire book. But like, um, isn't it so true though? It's so true. You know, <sighs> one of the one of the things that I often wake up to that's playing on my YouTube when I'm sleeping is um, the Financial Diet, and and I don't know if you follow the Financial Diet on I YouTube. Do. I think that they're wonderful. They, she did this interview with somebody, and I, I have to find it. Um, cause I just wake up to it and I've seen pieces of, <laughs> this is how I watch things as I fall asleep and wake up. I'm an old, I'm like, I am like a 70 year old man, <laughs> but she does this interview that I actually have to sit down and watch the whole thing, but it's all about like the added cost of healthcare and, and just life is and being a disabled person. And mm-hmm. what's crazy is that like, that is a shocking thing for people. Yeah. Yeah. The world isn't set up for anybody who isn't essentially like a 40 year old man. Well, there it is. White man. There it White is. Man. Yeah. There like, it, is. it really isn't. Uh, you know, your office spaces are age fact so that, you know, a 40 year old white man can feel comfortable mm-hmm. you know, like, the, down to like the most stupid things. Like it is not. Yeah. It is not built for anybody different. Yeah. So then when you're extra different, and require extra help, you're yeah. left behind. Well, this book definitely made me realize that I hardly ever think about disabled people. Yeah. Like, that is not a part of my th- thinking. I-, I just never think about that. And that's something that I need to improve upon within myself mm-hmm. and my efforts into, <clears throat> you know, doing things because it's just not something I really think about. Unless There's it's a like book- thrown in my face. Yeah, there's a book that I think we should both read and that I thought about a lot while I was reading this. And I think it's called Disability Visibility. Um, it's a nonfiction book that's gotten a lot of praise. Uh, let me pull it up here. Disability Visibility. Visibility. Um, oh, first person, uh, first person stories. stories okay. from, yes. So this has gotten a lot of really good praise. Um, and it might be a fun sort of follow-up book to read um after reading this since i i too don't like i don't i don't really think too much about disabilities either unless i like something sort of nudges me to think about it right exactly exactly and there's so many there's so many ways to be disabled it's such a blanket term it is it is it's and not I- it's not being paraplegic it's right and i think a lot of our minds go to like 
someone who's wheelchair bound Mm -hmm. and that's it. But even being wheelchair bound, like there's still so many various disabilities that are, that involve that, not just one. And there's things that make me like really upset when I, like when I see creators um, or people that I follow that use, there's many people use their wheelchair because they have things that like, yeah, they can walk around, but they have things that make it so that's, they, they can't do that all the time, whether it's a pain thing, whether right. it's a gait thing, whether it's an exhaustion fatigue thing. Like, they have to rely on a wheelchair sporadically. Or a cane. Because, or a cane, mm-hmm. or all those things. And, and there will be people that say nasty things like, oh, well, you're not whatever. I, you can walk without that, or you don't need that. And it's like... Yeah, you know, I've seen those disgusting comments, And it's too. so disgusting. It, it's so upsetting, because... It's hard. If you need an assistive device, you Mm -hmm. need an assistive device. Nobody, like, have you ever sat in a wheelchair for hours on end? Never. Your ass is going to hurt. Like, if you've ever done, if you ever had to use, like, a mobility device, like, none of these things are comfortable. Like, so many things that are assistive are not comfortable. They are assistive. They are mechanical things. Yes. And... No, who's faking? That's what right. it's like. Who's faking? Yeah, I mean, I'm it's, sure it's that somebody can come say. in, and it's so ignorant. There's somebody can come in and throw some stupid one-off example, but like that's not most people, right? Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you. I have to um see if I can get this book. We definitely should read it later. Um, yeah, you're right. It will be a good follow-up because I would like to. I've been eyeing it for more. a while. Yeah. I like to educate myself more. So, um, yeah, this, this book was, was really, really just fantastic. This guy, this man, he can write, write more things. You're hilarious. He you're can hilarious. write. I and just, if you, if you ever want to have a cocktail mocktail, I will go with you. I'll I, go with I you too. Know. I want to. I feel like we would. Ha- I will meet you in Provincetown. Uh, I will meet you anywhere. You just, you just name it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll meet most people in Provincetown. I love Provincetown. Um, I haven't been there in like two years, and it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was great. I highly recommend. Highly recommend. Just by looking at him, by Ryan O'Connell. Oh, and yes. if anybody out there has read the book Yes Daddy by Jonathan Parks Ramage, 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 Ramage. Ooh, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. He. That's his partner. They live together. Can you imagine the conversations they have? It must These be hilarious. Two? Oh, man. I would just love it. So get it. And uh, we, look, for a a <laughs> look for a giveaway. Look for a giveaway. I have two. Thank you, Atria, for sending me so many arcs of this book and a final copy. Because um, I got an arc and you get an arc and they mm-hmm. get an arc. <laughs> I have two more arcs. So I will do a giveaway on TBR Lowdown for that because you all should most definitely read this book. It's so good. It really, really is. It's so fucking funny. Gosh, I, I wonder what he's going to write about next. My favorite line, and I read my favorite line to you outside of the Kardashian thing, was when he's teaching at that school. He's giving his speech and he curses. And where is it? Because it's so funny. I died. I died. Page 221. Um, oh, you remember where it is? I think oh, I have it yes. marked. Yeah, so he's teaching, like, he's talking to Jonas's class about, like, being a writer in Hollywood um and and this one set kid goes but don't gay guys like run old, run Hollywood a teenager clearly gay who looked like a barista at our second favorite hipster coffee spot asked well sort of but it's mostly run by old straight white guys named Tim I said but so much of your career will be spent worrying if Tim likes your work and will give you the money you need to make your show show or even though your work isn't for fucking Tim, but even though your work isn't for fucking Tim, I stopped myself and turned to Jonas. Oh, sorry. Can I curse? <laughs> These are rich prep school kids. Jonas sighed. I'm pretty sure some of them have smoked crack as like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and as somebody who went to rich prep school kid school, oh, like I was God. like, this is so much true. <laughs> like, I don't know if anybody actually smoked crack, but God, there was a lot of stuff going on there. Oh my gosh. I just. Not in line with regular schools or regular people's experience. Right. Oh, I almost fell out of the hammock laughing with that one. 
So, what Kardashian do I need to push so, up the I, stairs? <laughs> I know, right? And th- this was also funny. I think he was talking about when he was in high school and he was dating this guy that eventually dumped him. Um, and they, he was talking about the, who's the biggest bitch in school. And he's like, what's worse? The biggest bitch in, bitch, bitch in school, Christy Sullivan, came up to me shortly after our breakup and hissed, what did you expect, Elliot? You're like disabled. Okay, wow. Was Christy made in a lab by CW execs in search of the perfect team villain? Just... <laughs> I, I can go on and on. This guy is hilarious. He's really funny. He can find uh, levity in anything. I believe that. Which, which Pick it is up. a coping. Read it. Which is a coping mechanism, by the way. Um, but it's really funny. Yeah. Love that. Read it. Um, yeah, so back to our non-sexual content. I think. I don't know what you're yeah. recommending. What are you recommending? You're going to recommend um, the joy of sex. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, I remember finding my parents copy. Did you ever ah! find your parents copy? But mine was like a 60s, 70s copy. So like, I guess they've revamped it because there's not like mustached men sitting on motorcycles. <laughs> And maybe the women are shaven now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm, There's a lot yeah. less pubic hair. But, um, yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't think I've recommended this book before. And oof, details are fuzzy. It's been a couple years, but it was really good. So I'm recommending What Happens at Night. Have I recommended this? Oh, okay. So. What Happens at Night by Peter Cameron. And this mm-hmm. is out from a catapult. Um, I have to read the flap. It says, an American couple travels to a strange snowy European city to adopt a baby who they hope will resurrect their failing marriage. Their difficult journey leaves the wife who was struggling with cancer, desperately weak, and her husband worries that her illness will prevent the orphanage from releasing their child. So this couple married, Mm -hmm. the wife has cancer, and it it, it seems as though they desperately want a baby, but what you find out is really like the husband desperately wants a baby. The Mm. wife kind of gets to this European city where they're they're supposed to pick up this child. And she goes off to this place and kind of like, it's some kind of a home, like a wellness kind of a home. And she's kind of there dealing with her illness. And I guess really accepting the fact that she's going to die. And she has no interest really um, in adopting this child. And so like she's supposed to meet the husband at the place to, you know, do the paperwork. And she's just not meeting him. She's just not, she's not, and she's not doing it. And he's really, really wanting this child. Mm -hmm. Why can't, if she's dying and he really wants a child, why can't he just adopt it when she's dead? Well, there were probably deadlines, you know, like dates to pick up the child. Like it was already set in motion. It's not like they just went there on a whim. Like it was. Ar- oh, this wasn't, she, going she wasn't there. like she wasn't like dying. And then he was like, you know what I want before you're dead, honey? A baby. No, like they were going there to <clears throat> pick up the child. This is why and they then were going she was there. dying. No, she was not like I'm going to die like in 12 hours. Or like she's she's has cancer. She's dying. She's going to be out of here eventually. You know what I mean? I still she's really sick. wait till she's dead. And well, problem this is, solved. No book. You know, Done. this is this is something <laughs> that they apparently both wanted at the time, but you know, and they experienced some weird things. Like they get there, and you know, she's in this like wellness place or whatever. He's trying to figure out how to get this child. He really wants this child, and then he ends up meeting some guy at this hotel, and they have this like sexual encounter in the hotel, you know, overnight, and. So a lot of things are questioned. Um, and then he meets this woman, this older woman who basically tells him, you know, if you want to raise this baby on your own, you know, you can, you know, I'll help you from time to time. It's very strange, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, you What's just need to again? read it. What happens at night? It's a very odd book, but like, I rather liked it. it I'm sitting weird. here thinking, you know, just wait till she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he he, he, solved. he he gets the baby. He gets the baby. So, well, yeah, good for him. But it was good but it was a baby. very strange journey to him getting this child. Well, I ugh, sort of remember this book, but I remember really liking it. Reading it sort of in one sitting, and that is I killed Ooh. Zoe Spanos. I remember you uh, reading that. Cat Frick, love this edition, by the way. I love it. It's beautiful. Edge. 
Um, so this is a YA thriller that was really fun. And I feel like if you kind of liked Sadie, if you want to listen to the audiobook, if you liked Sadie, especially mm-hmm. as an audiobook, you'd like this because there was a podcast element to it, which makes it fun. I'll read you the synopsis. It says when Anna, uh, Cicino, I don't know, something Italian, arrives at the small Hamptons village of Heron Mills for the summer for a summer nannying gig. She has high hopes for a fresh start. What she finds instead is a community on the edge of after the disappearance of Zoe Spanos, a local girl who has been missing since New Year's Eve. Anna bears an eerie resemblance to Zoe, and her mere presence in town stirs up still raw feelings about the unsolved case. As Anna delves deeper into the mystery, stepping further and further into Zoe's life, she becomes increasingly convinced that she and Zoe are connected, and that she knows what happened on New Year's. Two months later, Zoe's body is found in a nearby lake, and Anna is charged with manslaughter, but Anna's confession is riddled with holes, and Martina Green, teen host of the Missing Zoe podcast, isn't satisfied. Did Anna really kill Zoe? And if not, can Martina's podcast uncover the truth? Mm. So it's okay. fun. Like, it's, yeah. it's just a fun read. It's a good summer read. Yeah. More summer reads. More summer reads. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. So, I do remember you reading that and really, really liking it. I remember. Because it's just fun. Like, mm-hmm. it's, I've kept it. It's a good book. Yeah. Like, I think it's, yeah, it's a good time. It's fun. I love it. And you it. know I like Sadie. I feel like you were the ones that didn't like Sadie. No, I like, I did, I said Sadie was fine. I gave it three and a half stars. It was, it was, it was fine. Um, so some other terrible human being who didn't like it. Yeah, I think a couple others in our group were like, Sadie was terrible. I think it was fine. <laughs> I don't, I don't think about it ever. But I, it was fine when I listened to it. I mean, it's dead to me, but. <laughs> you know, folks, I don't think there's anything wrong with a, you know, a decent little three star, you know? And I don't no. think that every book is meant to be remembered and thought about, you know, day after day. Let me tell you a book that lives for free in my head almost every single day of my freaking life. Hmm. The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. I do think about it a lot. Um, if I Elizabeth watch... got paid for all the times I thought she would be a billionaire. <laughs> you know what I feel like will be similar in the sense that it's not your nor- your average vampire story and it's very literary. It's going to be the women eating that just came out. Did you see somebody's video about Yes, women? I know. And I was like, <laughs> you know... I was like thinking about you. I was like, mm, what that's going to make this? me read it. That's mm-hmm. going to make me read it. Every time she hates something, I'm like, well, now I have to read it because right. I'll probably love it. Yeah. I'm going to see if my library has it. We it don't was, it was always already on disagree. My list. <clears throat> we don't yeah. always disagree. But when she hates something, I usually love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just saw that video the other day. I was like, oh. Because it was on my list. And I was like, okay, that's going to be interesting. I, I think, think about I it. have the audiobook somewhere. And I think mm-hmm. I have an ebook of it, but I don't have it in hard copy. Yeah, it's that's short. what I, I didn't just realize how short it was. In the library. I know a lot of these books, I'm like, oh, I didn't realize you were a short little something. Huh. Interesting. You were a short so, little something. A short little something. Short Kings. That's what, that's yeah. what, those are the books we like. Right. Except the historian, that is not a short book. The short king, that is that is a that it, is a big it is queen. A chunker, and <laughs> I, I'm see, I don't think a week goes by I don't think about that book. I love it. I really want to reread it. Hey, for you people out there who reread on a regular basis, how do you do it? I try to reread things. Like I have a desire to reread things, and then like, I don't know. I just what don't get around to it. What are you talking about? You you reread Cleopatra and Frankenstein as soon as you finished it. Well, I'm still reading it. I don't want to let it go. I'm I'm like, I don't want to let it go. I don't know. I don't know what it is about that freaking book, man. Listeners, she's a liar. She knows how to reread. She just doesn't do it. But I'm saying, why can't I? Like, I, I mean, you're right. Like, I read Leviathan Wakes like three times, Caliban's War twice, Avanon's Gate twice. <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up now. Never mind. Um, but I, But particularly this year. I really want to reread The Historian. I really, really... I also want to reread Night Film. Yeah, that would be fun to reread. Mm-hmm, because I, I read that back in 2019. We read that a while ago. Mm-hmm. So this year, I would love to reread The Historian and Night Film. That would be wonderful. Huh, <sighs> man, I tell you. I need to go on a reading vacation, man. I just... 
there are so many good get books COVID again. Right You'll now. read so uh, no, ma'am. No, because the COVID I had, there was no reading happening once it really kicked in. COVID kicked Yeah, I had to get through the ass. fevers and then I was fine. But uh, you fevers. know what's funny? I never had a fever with COVID. I never had a fever, but I couldn't stay awake. I basically slept for 30 days. They, like I I've sweat. never felt so bad in my I life. I sweat like a whore in church. I keep bring back an old phrase from the nineties, and yeah. I and I was had fevers and I was tired, and I had a yeah. cough, but like I didn't care. Like I, the first three things, exhausting. I I feel like I've never experienced such extreme fatigue where I could like I had no control over anything i had to sleep Mm -hmm. even if i wanted to stay i could not my body was like no we're shutting down and that feels terrifying when you have no control over staying awake i was so scared i called my mom and was like i don't want to die like i was terrified (laughs) because i couldn't stay awake that that feels scary that's scary yeah i'm sorry 30 days of that oh and the amount of muscle mass I lost in 30 days by being in the, that was not a good time. I don't want that shit ever again. No. All right. All right. No. All right. No. Don't go on vacation. That's all I'm going to say. I guess not. I guess not. Oof. I'm just glad you're okay. Yeah, no, it wasn't bad. But whatever's going around right now, um, at least for, for us, uh, all four of us that got it was not yeah. horrendous. Right. So. Yeah. Not to freak anybody out. God, this, I had COVID, what, 20... Last year in January, this was like the first COVID. So mm-hmm. don't get freaked out. It just people. like disappeared from my from my world for like a month, and I was like, "Is this really alive?" <laughs> <Right. laughs> I was very yeah. concerned. I thought you were I thought you were a goner, Oof. but you're not. You're here. You're fine. I'm here. I'm here talking books. <laughs> Did you ever read the book thief talking about books? I've never read the book Thief. What is that about? I don't want to read it. What is it? <laughs> you like how I say I don't want to read it, but then after I just ask you, what is it about? But <laughs> well, the first part that I say you're gonna not want to read it because it's like a World War II historical fiction. It's YA, sort of. But there's this girl, and she makes um, basically they're hiding this Jewish man in their basement, and mm-hmm. this girl like makes this has this relationship with him and it's it's a very moving and sad story it's very actually it's actually really good do you think i would like it you know me or do you think i'd, I'd be bored because when i, I hear people talk about bored. it i have no interest I'm like it, it nothing makes me want to say oh yeah i want to i want to check that out no i don't know you mean dnf the nightingale right so i don't know maybe we'll be bored i don't know i did like in the first 20 pages i don't know and also, I didn't love all the light you cannot see. I thought it was fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought it was don't, fine. Don't read it. <laughs> <laughs> I take it all back. Don't read I it. I had all the light you cannot see on my shelf for a, a, for a minute, for a couple of years. And I finally read that earlier this year. And I was like, hmm. All right. Well, okay. All right. No. No, no. I consider that a three-star read. It wasn't horrible. And it wasn't great for me. It was just, you know, it was fine. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I think I liked um, Cloud Cuckoo Land more, but I think Cloud Cuckoo Land is not for everybody. I'm going to get that from the library at some point this year. I'm going to give my library a break for a minute because I have so many, like, I I feel like I'm on a really good track this year of reading books that the publishers send me, and I'm on a good trajectory with with getting that done. Oh, you are way better than I am. I am not good at that. I'm I get okay. there eventually. You but do it's get like, there eventually, but it like takes I'm me a really, while. like I'm really prioritizing some of those reads, and um, so I'm going to give my library a break for the next couple of months. Because I do read from my shelves a lot. It's just that my shelves are constantly expanding. <laughs> so true, right? So true. So although, like those. Like when I'm saying I'm going to give my library a break for the next couple of months, I feel like I'm dest- like destroying my library when I say that. It's like, you, you need my patronage, don't you? I, I get worried. Like <laughs> The library is not going to go out of business because you're not borrowing books, I, get wor- I feel bad if I'm not like supporting my library monthly. Oh, no, but I still get audiobooks. I'm good. Never mind. I don't feel bad anymore. I Look, I love my libraries. I want them to. <laughs> 
I so many of okay. you might think that Naomi is the sane one in a relationship, but she really is like the saner one. She's not sane. <laughs> Don't get excited. Well, you know what I mean? Like, I want to make sure that I'm always supporting my library, right? The patients so. have taken over the asylum. Okay, we are we are all crazy. We're she's running just, loose. She's just she's just the most together. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my library people at? Do you know what I think? You know what lives rent free in my head all the time now is what? our conversation when you were like, "No, Alyssa, you have to back into your space because what?" If someone is attacking you, you've run them over, Naomi. You can still run someone over going in reverse. But I'm just <laughs> She's saying. Like, you need to get away quickly. Qu- yes, well, you can quicker still, to just but you can the still car hit a bitch with your forward. car. I mean, you are not wrong. You are not wrong. But also, it's quicker to just get in. Boom. Go. Go. And I think if I'm trying to escape, I would rather run over someone going in reverse than hit them going forward in case they smash my windshield. Like I have thought about this a lot. This this conversation pops into my head a lot. To to because <laughs> I'm too old to change now. I've been backing in only for like over 20 years now. That's fine. I mean, I don't <laughs> want to change you. I just want you to maybe concede my point that you can. You can it's I easily said, I escape. Said you're not wrong. I said you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It just feels like I'm in more danger if I have to back out first. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It may not make sense, but this is where we are. This is where we are. Fine. Do I even know how to pull in anymore? Do I even know how? You know how to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I'm just saying, can I make a pull-out joke? Can I tell you a bad pull-out joke first? Oh, my gosh. So so I used to coach swimming, and um, when you start breaststroke, there's a certain way that you have to start underwater, and it's called a breaststroke pull-out. And I remember one day we were all around the pool deck coaching, and there was this young child, a boy, and he – goes to do whatever he's supposed to be doing with breaststroke and he gets to the end of the lane and he goes I forgot to pull out and every adult <laughs> looked at each other and just went <laughs> don't say it <laughs> how did you all keep it together I would have had to turn around and give a little giggle like, how did you keep it, it together just, it was too funny and like, I just I was like it's okay you'll do it next <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good I think one. About that red free a lot in my head too. That is a good one. Oh my gosh. Oh, he did not know what he said. No, he didn't. He's like, why do all the why do all the adults just turn nothing. red? Nothing. Oh, that's too funny. <clears throat> anyway, we think we need it. to end this episode. Yeah, we need to end it. Okay. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in. Thanks for joining us. Um, follow us on the social media, TBR Lowdown, and uh, go to our website, TBR Lowdown.com. Okay, bye! Bye! <laughs>